So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Ease Conversations. Thanks a lot to everyone who listened to the last episode featuring the homie Matt and I. Hope you enjoyed listening to us provide our um, recaps on both Season 3 of The Mandalorian and Season 1 of Ahsoka. So now for Episode 123 of Easy Conversations. I'm extremely excited, of course, to be back in the studio virtually with the homie Matt. So what's up to the people. What's going on, everybody? Hope you're having a great day right now. We got a good episode in store for you today. It's going to be, we're going to get intellectual here, and we have a, a first time guest too. So, Eric, why don't you introduce who that is right now? Yes, sir. Very excited to introduce to the podcast for the first time my cousin, whom you've seen his brother appear on here a few times, been solid as well. So, now I'm sure he'll deliver in the same regard. So, I'll bring in for the first time the homie, my cousin, Dil Deshaun. So, what's up, the people? Hey, guys. I'm, uh, I'm excited to be here for my first time. Hopefully it's going to be a good pod. We have lots to talk about about Loki, so uh, we'll get into it and see uh, if you guys like what we have to say. Yep, exactly. So like Dale said, we'll be going over the um, Smash show on uh, Disney Plus, Loki, which has now rolled out his, its second season, concluded a few days ago at the time of recording. So really excited to get into this show. There's a lot to unpack. Like Matt said, we'll be getting intellectual on here. I don't know about myself getting intellectual, but we'll try our best here to, to break down and make sense of what happened. So, Dill, as our guest, I'll throw it over to you first. What were your thoughts on uh, Season 2 of Loki? Uh, honestly, I took a little long to get into it, and I wasn't as excited as I thought I should have been. But honestly, uh, getting into it was really good. I haven't watched uh, any other Marvel shows before that one, uh, that season. So the last season I think I had watched was Hawkeye. Okay. And wow. honestly wasn't that good to my opinion. <laughs> I liked it, but not that much. But Loki season two was definitely the big hitter for this one. Yeah. It was very good. Definitely. And Matt, what about you? What are your thoughts on Loki season two opening thoughts? So my opening thoughts on Loki season two is... I really enjoyed it, though it like it was like a slow burn show, kind of like what Dylan said. It took a while to get into. I feel like the end, the payoff was amazing in this show. By the way, folks, full spoilers on Loki season two. Like you gotta see before listening. Um, yeah, I felt that was a slow burn, but like the end was worth like the the waiting. Like the the slow beginning, the end justified it all. So. Um, no, I really much enjoyed it. I just want to talk about, like, I have not been impressed by any Marvel show, like, before this, like, Miss Marvel, She-Hulk, Eric, I think you can agree. Like, they've been on the lower end of the spectrum show. So it was nice to Loki to bring it back to form for Marvel. I really enjoyed the show. What about you, Eric? Okay, so to touch on both your guys' points, and Dill specifically, me, Loki, season two, having loved season one, I was uh, not worried, but also feeling like people were putting a lot of hype and pressure towards it being amazing as season one was. So I, I didn't know or think that he would reach that height. And in my opinion, it at the very least matched season one and in a lot of ways elevated it too. But, and I'll also say for me, I was hooked the whole time. As soon as I started watching it, I did not really find it was slow. Like I was into it the whole time. And like with season one, confused a lot of points, but was always interested to find out, all right, what's coming up next. And like you said, Matt, I think they wrapped it up beautifully at the end. Incredible last episode, which we'll get to as we get into this episode there. But it, amazing show. Like, best one we've had in a long time for Marvel. Mm -hmm. And a refreshing bounce back on the TVA side of things. So, no, no, season two definitely delivered, in my opinion. Now, where to go from here? Maybe start at the beginning. And kind of like I said, where mm -hmm. season one ended off with a... A bang in that now Sylvie killed He Who Remains and it set off all these different branch timelines and now in season two we're dealing with the repercussions of that and it just was kind of a mess at times Loki's slipping through time all over the place not really I don't really understand what he's doing and where mm -hmm. they're going with it um, I don't know if this is the best way to start the episode there but I feel like Sylvie kind of screwed it up for our main characters yeah. here in creating a lot of problems and now Loki's having to clean up. So did you like where they kind of went with Sylvie in this series, Dill? Like 
what they did with her character. So, like, my opinion on Sylvie is from the first episode straight up, I didn't like her anymore. Yeah. She she didn't want to listen to what Loki had to say. They are basically the same person, just from a different universe. Yeah. And for him, for one Loki to understand one person, he who remains to understand that, and her not to understand, they were on two different pages, and it seemed like they were going to be, like, have a relationship type thing going on between them. You have to understand that person when she did not want to understand Loki. And as we progress in season two, you could see she still doesn't want to listen to what they have to say about He Who Remains or about Victor Timely. She just wanted to kill mm. kill him off, basically, every time. And, uh, like, as in the last episode, every time he tried to change her mind yeah. to get her to, to try and listen, but all she wanted to do was kill He Who Remains and not understand what the repercussions were or anything else. <clears throat> so, personally, I didn't think... Sylvie was a big hit for me in this season, but in the first season I did like her. Yeah. So, big change. Same here, Matt. What are your thoughts on that? What you said was great, Dylan, because I feel the exact same way. Her character was a little weaker in this season. She failed to understand like the greater good, what she had to do, which Loki actually understands in the end. But we'll get we'll touch on that later. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, her character was. Then wasn't really interested in any any of her scenes in this season. I was more interested in like the new character in episode one that was introduced, Ouroboros. Mm -hmm. yep. I forget the actor's name, but he just won an Oscar uh, last year, I think, for Everything Everywhere All At Once. He was good. Um, like our introduction to him, you know, he's a little IT, like fix it everything kind of guy. At first, I wasn't sure about his character, but it grew on me. The whole like. The loom is in trouble because of Sylvie's actions, killing he who remains, like all of, like everything overloading. Basically, that was the main focus of the season, trying to fix that. Um, the show did not go where I like. I thought it it wasn't as predictable as I thought the show, which is what I like. Like with the whole loom situation, I didn't know where they were going to go with that. I like how they wrapped it up. But uh, Eric, what were your thoughts on like the whole loom and temporal, like? timeline being the focus point of like what the danger did you like that doomsday type thing going on there yeah the loom threw me off completely like, i didn't know where it was going like what the end game was and like again mm -hmm. just quickly on the sylvie thing like where what she wanted to set up with this is like she wanted to give everyone free will but then the loom was collapsing on itself and it wasn't able to i guess calibrate the all the timelines that were going through it and timelines were basically dying because of her actions so I didn't know what the end game was going to be in that are these timelines all going to be able to live, like the people on them have successful lives, and that was the main focus of the season. Didn't know how that was going to work and um, who was going to solve that issue. And then with OB bringing in Victor Timely, all trying to fix it and work together on it. As soon as they introduced Victor Timely, I kind of thought that it was, a like they said, a contingency plan on he who remains is behalf in that he was trying to set himself up to get power again so that's mm -hmm. kind of what i thought they were teeing up in that while he let himself be killed at the end of season one he was still pulling the strings at the end of the day and he kind of was to a certain degree but then yeah. he was just putting him setting himself up through victor timely to re-become uh, either he remains or a uh, uh, kang the conqueror variant that's kind of where i thought this season was going like, I had a ton of theories just on the loom when they're, the whole episode four focused on Timely is now in the TVA and he's working on fixing the loom with OB, which I love their dynamic. Like, when the two of them met, like, oh, like, just super excited yeah. to meet each other yeah. and, like, geeking out over one another. Like, I thought that was hilarious. And, um, yeah, like, I thought they were teeing up an OB and Timely team up to make, like I said, Timely become Kang. Not the case. And, um... Yeah, then when Timely, I guess this kind of goes into a prediction or theory I had was when Victor Timely stepped out to go and put the throughput multiplier into the, <laughs> the um, temporal loom, I thought that was like him when he turned to spaghetti to become, yeah. like send his aura out into the different timelines and like uh, set off all the different Kangs to come through. That's what I kind of thought was going to happen. What do you guys think about that? That is honestly not a bad theory. Like the more I hear you talking about it now, it sounds very believable because I actually had no idea where they were going with that. Um, I thought they were just going to kill him off right there like he's dead and you think because they really brought him up as just a normal person. Like when, I think it was the end of season, uh, the end of episode four, 
that uh, Sylvie was going to kill Victor Timely, and she hesitated and didn't do it. Thank you. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> like, he, he, he wasn't scared to die and had no reason <clears throat> to die, so I don't think he is a bad... He is as bad as Kang the Conqueror or as He Who Remains, basically, in my opinion. He, maybe he wasn't even set to become that person in the mm -hmm. end. And as we can see with the end of uh, season two is that he is, in the end, a good person. He's not like uh, his previous, uh, his previous, um, like brain. variants. Yeah, variants yeah. Sorry. yeah. Yeah, I, I just want Victor, to, uh, let's touch on Victor Timely. Like, that's when the show picked up for me. Episode oh, three, we go back to 18, uh, 80, 1893. I really liked that episode. And I liked the Renslayer, like, going back even further and giving a young Victor Timely the book, the TVA guideline. Mm -hmm which um is kind of cool because victor used that to create his stuff but then ob used that used victor timely stuff to create the tba guideline so it's like they both inspired each other which is mind-blowing and also ouroboros in mythology is the snake that's eating its own tail right it's like that circle picture where the snake eating its own tail so it's almost like the show's pretty clever naming him that because he was inspired by his own work almost, but he didn't know that. So I thought that was a clever thing the show did. Mm -hmm. um, but back to Victor Timely, I thought Jonathan Jonathan Majors is awesome. Again, he always is. It was a great character. I, I like like I said, the show picked up for me then. Love seeing the olden days. He was so ahead of his time too, which was cool to see. Like people must have thought he was a wizard or a warlock or something. Like he can't be busting out that technology at that time. But. Uh, no, and like I said, like episode three and four really picked up for me. Ending with episode four where he explodes into the spaghetti. Mm -hmm. I did not think we would be going like full out Groundhog Day or like going back and redoing stuff like they do in episode five and six. But like I thought like he was done there. I didn't know. I thought they were just going to continue forward chronologically and not have Loki go back. So again, the show always kept me on my toes. Um that's a cool prediction, though, Eric. Him like go, branching out into like the all the timelines. Um, yeah, what did you guys think of like the flashback episodes or going back in time? Those couple episodes. Yeah, um, so that one was good as well. Like, I didn't I, again did not think they'd be going back like that. It made sense though, right? Given Loki's time slipping abilities, that the whole season was working towards like him being confused as to why this is happening, to then eventually mastering them in the end. Yeah, I like the flashback episodes. And again, for that, my theory was that we were seeing this would all build up to the start of the TVA in that Loki was going back in time and taking all of them out of their previous versions of themselves before they got to the TVA for the first time. That it was creating like some sort of weird, like you said, snake eating its own tail. Loki's thinking, oh, we have to bring Mobius or Dawn and then um, Casey, a.k.a. Frank, and all the others from their timeline, spaces in the timeline, to bring them to the TVA. And I thought that was like that happening for the first time all over again kind of thing. So that was kind of mm -hmm. what I was thinking was happening there. And then Loki was oh. going to be doing the same thing to, in a sense that He Who Remains did initially. Just a weird, I don't know, mind like breaking uh, time thing or something. I don't know. That's kind of what I thought was happening. I enjoyed it. It was cool to see them, like uh, the assembling of the team. And then, um, yeah, I mean, how does that episode end again? Episode five, again, it's futile. They all spaghettify as well. And then Loki masters the time slipping at the end of the episode. But I enjoyed the going yeah. back in time. What did you think of it, Dill? Yeah, I really enjoyed it as well. Like we got to see what Mobius could have been. Obviously, we knew he would have been into those uh, sea dudes and yeah, all that. Yeah. But and it was nice to see that Loki was actually able to get these guys to c go with him and try and save the TVA that they have no nothing to know about mm -hmm. because they're mm -hmm. different variants. And for Loki to take that initiative and be able to do that, and like he's doing what the uh, he who remains could be doing mm -hmm. but he just watches and lets them do whatever he wants and Loki was able to do all this all this and to touch on Sylvie a bit um, if you think like they're both they're both basically Loki they're they have the same powers they they come from a say I guess a same 
like uh, childhood, I could say. Uh, mm -hmm. Yep. But um, so the question is, is, could Sylvie have done what Loki did? Go mm -hmm. back in time and take... Because obviously Loki was time slipping, which helped him to be able to do that. But if Sylvie were the one to be time slipping, would she have been able to do the same thing Loki had done? Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think about that a lot. Because yeah. her, her, her character didn't have a big... A big role in this season, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you guys touched on Mobius a little bit. I must say, I really liked his character in this season. Yeah. Owen Wilson did a great job. I like. There's a couple of scenes in the first. There's a scene in the first episode, and there's a scene. Sorry, in the second episode and the last episode. The second episode, there's a scene in the pie room where they're just chilling there. Mm -hmm. First of all, that's awesome, a pie room. <laughs> and then Loki. Uh, just a moment that made me laugh. Like, he's reminiscing on him in Avengers 1. He's like, what the hell was I thinking? Like, yeah. trying to take over with aliens. That was funny. But the best scene is in the last episode where him and Mobius are talking, where he, he time slips back to when he's in Chains, Chains first, arrived at, first arrived at the TVA, and he has a really good conversation with Mobius. Mobius tells that story about how he couldn't do what needed to be done, and then people died because of his actions. Kind of like implanting that idea in Loki's head of what Loki's going to be doing in the last moments of the last episode. But we'll get, well, I think we'll touch upon that at the end. But I thought Mobius was great in this season. Mm -hmm. Owen Wilson's a good actor, likable, really funny him seeing him trying to sell CDs and stuff uh, in episode five. Episode five, actually, like I said, like three and four hooked me in, but five and six, like really cemented my love for this, sh for this season. Mm -hmm. Five was a cool, cool seeing all the different, uh, TVA people in the different settings, you know, like Casey escaping Cal Alcatraz, which is kind of funny because people have escaped. Well, three people have escaped, but we don't know if they made it out. Yeah. Um, so that was kind of like a tribute to that. But uh, no, it was uh, time travel is really hard to do, guys. Like in movies, shows the logic. Like you can probably there's probably plot holes because of the time travel, but it doesn't really matter in the Marvel universe because mm -hmm. they do it. They work on that constantly. Like well, later when we're talking about where the where Marvel is headed, like it's headed. There's a reason they're explaining all this stuff in Loki season two, in my opinion. It's to prep us for what's to come with the Kang, the Kang Dynasty, and future wars to come with people coming from different timelines. We're kind of getting like an educational, just like season one of Loki. We're getting educated on all this stuff because it's going to matter down the road, or at least I hope so. Mm -hmm. um, I I don't know where I was headed, but, but what did you guys think? This is like maybe my least favorite part of the season was just Miss Minutes and Renslayer like there in the middle of the season plotting, doing their own thing. What did you think of them too? Okay, agreed. Didn't love their whole plot because ultimately it went nowhere and it was just like a, a speed bump in the road. Of like this is insignificant in the bigger picture here that Loki and the, the gang are working towards solving the real issues, right? I will say though, loved Miss Minutes. Like I feel like that's a controversial yeah. take, yeah. but she was hilarious. And like her interactions yeah. with Timely, where she's like just straight up hating on him, and like you could have given me a body, and you never did. It was I loved. It. I thought it was great. Yeah. And she nailed it. In my opinion was terrifying, um, and like was like a sicko too. And like the people are getting squished in that cube. Yeah. She's just loving it. Hey, it was it was definitely interesting for sure. Renslayer, I've never been a fan of her, honestly. Like mm. she's kind of a nuisance in season one, and then even in this season two, like I would have liked her more. I feel like if they really went down the path of her and he and Kang ultimately being a power couple again, I feel like I would have been mm. more down with that. Which it looked like they're teeing up, and then in episode three, she's like, "Oh, I think I could get used to this partnership." He just pulls his hand back in this minute. It's like, mm, yeah. yep, no, nope, ain't no partnership with my boy. So it was pretty funny. But uh, you're right, though. I didn't love the whole, like, Renslayer minutes plot because it went literally nowhere at the end of the day. What did you think, though? Yeah. yeah um, for Renslayer, when she tried to, like, get back into it, take her power back at the TVA, I mean, I didn't think it was going to go anywhere in the first place. And I honestly thought, like, she was going to die. I thought she was going to get killed by either Sylvie or... Actually, yeah. in the last episode, I thought we would have seen something, but yep. we ended up not seeing anything. But Miss Minutes was amazing, like, very <laughs> terrifying, too. Like, yep. she was getting creepy at one point. I was like, this is going somewhere. Yeah. It was pretty good. But uh, Miss Minutes, uh, in the last episode, we see her again. Mm. And I wonder if 
we will see her in the MCU at one point. Because she definitely, definitely has a significant amount of knowledge and power. Mm -hmm. So hopefully <clears throat> we can see her more. But Rensselaer, I don't want to see her anymore. <laughs> yeah, agreed. What did you think, Matt? I definitely like Miss Minutes more than Renslayer. Um, she was like, she had more dialogue, more time. It was funny when she was hitting on Victor Timely, like you said, Eric. That was good. Um, I really liked in episode four, Renslayer trying to take over, like you said, Dylan. And I liked when they shut down, like, their lot, um, B15 is their name, right? B5, B15. Eh. I wrote it down. You know, the, the, the guards, the TVA yeah, girl. X5, B15. Just give yeah. the names. Like, X5 needs a name, in yeah. my opinion. Like, we got Brad, he gets a name. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I did not like X5. Nah. Anyways, when she she allows magic to be used again in the TVA, and then Loki's able to use his magic yeah. to get X5 to prune Renslayer, that was pretty cool. I like that whole scene. The cool use of Loki's powers in this season, yes. um, especially in the last episode. Um but yeah, I would like I said I didn't really need them in this season. I here's my thoughts. Like we had we got a six episode one almost an hour long each episode season. Maybe it would have been better if they had maybe do a movie on just this happening because I feel like what happens in episode one and what happens in episode six not a lot like of not a lot. Um, it could have been trimmed down almost. But then again, we wouldn't have got all the exposition and like character development. So maybe I'm totally wrong, but. Uh, Sometimes I feel like it drags, like Marvel does this, they'll have a lot of filler. Loki, less filler than the others, though. Um, should we get into the last episode? Because I feel like that was, I love the last episode. I mean, you guys said you guys were re-watching it. Like, what were your thoughts on the last episode? I'll just say right off the rip, best episode we've seen in Marvel ever. In my opinion, the mm -hmm. GOAT episode of them all. I was hooked the whole time. I was very happy to see it was an hour long as well. Needed yeah. that that running time to explain everything and in my opinion tie everything up extremely well and then the culmination of like i said loki's new powers and um ultimate sacrifice he made i don't want to say everything there that happened in this one there because there's a lot to go over but absolutely love the episode matt you highlighted the mobius and um loki conversation in the mm -hmm. detainment area my favorite part of the episode was the he who remains and loki conversation I was just like a couple of times I was like chills when they stop they pause time when Loki paused time and he lifts his yeah, finger up and says yeah. what makes you think this is the first time we've had this conversation I was like let's go oh. I was so hyped it was incredible and um, that whole conversation about I make the big choice so that's why I'm in the big chair Loki had to make the ultimate choice like one of the biggest ones if not the biggest choice we've ever seen comparable to Tony Stark and um, mm. He made the ultimate sacrifice in the end. God is thrown. It's nuts. Like, I can't wait to rewatch this whole series, honestly, and see how everything led up to this moment of Loki's change from villain to hero. And, um, yeah, a full-on change in heart in um, giving up his <laughs> life for uh, to make sure everyone can have theirs kind of thing. So I think it was amazing. Yeah, like the last episode, like honestly, the best episode I've watched as well out of all the Marvel series. I, I really enjoyed uh, WandaVision, but this tops it big time. Yeah. Uh, like Loki, just being able to pause time and pause Sylvie. Like he, at one point we thought he was going nowhere with trying to stop Sylvie to kill he who remains again. But for him to be able to pause time, not just be, uh, it being uh, he who remains to be able to do it is nice. But as Eric said, um, when he does mention he's the he sits in the big chair because he does the big decisions, Loki gets his big chair at the end of the episode because he made the biggest decision. Yep. So it shows mm -hmm. how much power Loki really has at the end of the season. He's definitely gonna like he's definitely gonna come back in the MCU in my opinion and have a big role. Hope he's so. not going anywhere. Okay. That's a, that's something to talk about actually. But first I just <laughs> wanna say that first half of the last episode I love the Groundhog Day, like yes. Loki being like again faster, faster. Like yeah. let's let's go through this faster to get the temp good. the thing the fixing the loom, rushing everybody. But what what gave me goosebumps was when he asked Obi, he's like, how long would it take to acquire all this knowledge? And then decades, and then Victor's like centuries, and then it's just <laughs> centuries later. Yeah. So how many goddamn days do you think he <laughs> did? Like hundred, like a hundred years. So think about that, like. 
I just, my brain can't even think about that, like him, like painstakingly one day at a time, like learning everything. And then obviously we don't need to see it, which is great. And then like, he's super knowledgeable and OB and, and Victor, like, what the hell? How do you know so much? Like, doesn't matter. Let's go rush, rush, rush. All to fig to find out that even if they rush and they do it fast enough, it's still not enough, nice. which is where Loki explores different options. I just want to pause on episode on the last episode and just talk about Tom Hiddleston as Loki Frick, this is why Loki is the best show in the MCU because of Tom Hiddleston's portrayal, his maturity, super like he, he he's been playing Loki for 13 years now or more. Like it's crazy how much he's that character's changed and matured. You can see it in earlier episode where he he misses his friends from the TVA, right? Like like he wants to get them back. He 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 wants a purpose. The whole sh- the whole season they're like alluding to that. He's super, he's changed so much. It's great to see him in the last episode care so much and want to fix everything. And like we all talked about him talking to Mobius. I love like everything culminated into him making a decision going like, hey, we don't have to do it this way. There's other options too, which he figures out that other option, which by the way, that moment, I'll let you talk. I'll let you go on it first, Eric, was super epic when he decides like what he, the choice he's gonna make and he decides to go for it eric like that was the most epic thing wasn't it bone chilling and like you know it's gonna yeah. work too because they failed in every other attempt right so like you know that when he steps out of those doors onto the gangway that it's this is it like he is making that ultimate sacrifice like i said and that it's gonna work he's gonna find a way i didn't know what he was gonna do though i did not see that coming that he'd blow up the the temporal loom and uh, that he would then be able to weave a web of uh, hairline branches of like twigs that he would be the one fueling the fire to give them life like i thought that was super cool visually looked incredible as well that's Mm -hmm. another thing that loki the show nails cinematography and just the look of it all incredible yeah chills him the slow walk up to his throne the the green and gold just combining together there to make that web of timelines unbelievable and um just want to say on the point that you made about him wanting his friends and all that me the whole time i kind of thought he was just doing this all for sylvie like he loved her like that's how i was perceiving it when she's in the bar like asking like what are you doing this for like what's your reason why 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 he's like my friends i think it was more than that i think it was her like i think she had a big part of it in that he really wanted to protect her and there was some real love there, but obviously as well okay. did create those relationships with his friends, like Mobius especially. But like, who gives a f- Casey? Like, who cares about Casey? Like, I don't think yeah. he's, I don't think they're that close. But um, <laughs> yeah, it was unreal. That was the sickest, one of the sickest moments of the episode. Honestly, like him just suiting up, like the horns coming yeah. up. It, it just looked so cool. Yeah. Yeah. To add to what Eric was saying about him and Sylvie. Uh, as we saw in the first season, they were. It seemed like they were gonna have a more intimate relationship, get into it a lot more. But as we, like, it, from my perspective in season two, he did want to help his friends more than just help Sylvie. That's true. Sylvie was basically just getting in the way of things, and he was still able to to do what he wanted to do with her doing the uh, getting in the way. So, mm. she good point. honestly, she was basically useless to me <laughs> in this season. <laughs> uh, he just got in the way of of things and. But I like your perspective on he might be doing it for her because we don't know how he was feeling. But, yeah. like, uh, to go back on what Matt said about Loki being in the... Like, uh, Tom Hiddleston being oh. the actor for 13 years, he's evolved so much as, like, Loki and just changed a lot. Like, just him sitting down with... Uh, with um, oh my God. Mobius. Mobius and talking about uh, how what he did in the past, like, tried to kill... The Avengers and stuff like that and like seeing how he's like what was I thinking it's a huge maturity level for him and mm-hmm. you see he just wants to do good now instead of being the god of mischief who tries to kill people so yeah. he's matured a lot just quickly Matt I want to touch on that that you, the point you made as well about Tom Hiddleston as Loki one of the best uh, castings ever for a yeah. comic book character like he's actually solidified himself as one of the goats with like when I've mentioned in the past like I think of God, uh, Hugh Jackman, Wolverine, Robert Downey Jr., Iron Man. I throw up Magneto as well. I'm a big fan of his as um, like in the X Men movies. I forget the actor's name right now. It's tough. Uh, Ian McKellen or something like that. And uh, yeah. Tom Hiddleston as Loki is now in that 
Mount Rushmore of uh, comic book actor character portrayals. Incredible. Yeah, like, um, so like the scene where he does, he steps out and his his armor is like resurfacing on his body. The music, yeah. I paid special attention to the music. The score was fantastic. That that scene, you guys, to me is like better than anything I saw in Ant Man Part Three <laughs> and then the last few. Well, Marvel that, movies like yeah. that was cinematically epic. I wish I was watching it in the on, on at the theater because my TV was not big enough. Mm. Um, it was epic. Um, the episode is aptly titled "Glorious Purpose." Like that's perfect for that. Loki's found like what he needed to do. He becomes he's not Loki anymore. He's Loki Tree because he's a tree <laughs> that's <laughs> holding. <laughs> he's a tree that's holding all the branches at the end. And honestly, I think in my opinion. That's his swan song. I don't think we'll see him anymore. Oh. That's that's just my prediction. Just because Tom Hiddleston, like contractually, how many more years is he going to play Lo- play Loki? I think this is a perfect end to his character, actually. And I stole that Loki tree joke from an article online. I'm not oh, taking. I should have just taken it. Um, <laughs> that was good. No. I don't want to be. Um, yeah. Okay, so I kind of agree with you, Matt, in the sense that I'm not sure we'll see Loki again because this is the perfect ending for him. He's the one right now. What he did at the end ultimately is, or this is my interpretation of it, he remains with saying that the only way that this could work without setting off a multiversal war is if you kill Sylvie right now and then either I keep just um, overseeing everything in the sacred timeline or you take on that role with me and Mm -hmm. we just make sure everything sets and like stays the course basically so that we don't set off these different branches but loki saw an outcome where we can have these different timelines and everyone can live peacefully without causing an ultimate war and having to kill sylvie as well Mm -hmm. that's kind of how i interpreted that last episode and what he did by breaking the loom and being the guy in the chair that holds all the timelines together is now giving everyone a chance to live their lives with free will without the TVA pruning different variants and timelines that shouldn't happen and just seeing, okay, do whatever you want and you'll either pay the consequences for it, but at least it's your, it's your mistake to make in a certain way. And then it'll be up to everyone to unite and take on all the Kangs if that's what we see down the road. Hopefully it is. Yeah. That's kind of how I saw it all, that Loki's kind of like, the watcher in what if like it's a very similar role in my opinion yeah so that's what i'm seeing and are we going to see the watcher intervene i don't know um we'll see maybe we see a different loki variant pop up but i do like that like that's his send off is like okay now i'm giving you all the choice to do what you want and uh, hopefully you make the right ones and that humanity can prevail instead of having this kind of dictator at the top he remains who's controlling everything that's kind of how i understood it yeah, like this version of this Loki could probably not be a part of the MCU anymore because of his huge sacrifice in the end to be able to overwatch everything in the TVA and all the branches. But I don't think this is a last of Tom Hiddleston in the MCU. We will see another variant okay. for sure. Okay. There's, there's just too much character growth to, at this point mm. just to throw it away. Like, I just see a lot of leaks and stuff that they want to bring back Robert Downey Jr. They want to bring back... They're, they're not mm. going to throw away Tom Hiddleston if they're trying to bring back Robert Downey Jr. or Chris Evans. So, I hope to keep seeing him here. But um, to add on to the Kang, the Kang stuff, I'd love to see him face off against... With uh, an army against Kang when it does come because <laughs> he, he knows who he is and hopefully he could help, but... Like I'd you're saying, Loki, Loki help out against yeah, Kang. Okay, yeah, if yeah. we could, like if it could possibly happen. Yeah. We don't know what could happen at this oh, point, yeah. but it would be cool. No, oh, that's all good. Um, I forgot what I was going to say, but I do have a question for you guys. Um, they show Renslayer, like last shot of her looking up and there's like purple lightning or light or something. Like I, I'm actually genuinely confused. Like is that her and at the end of time or is she happy? What's going on there? I... I Generally, I have no idea. That, that was a question mark I had. So my theory on this purple color of many characters we've seen in the MCU, one of them is my dog, Kang the Conqueror. I think that was some, mm. some sort of hint that that was a Kang in there or something like that. That's kind okay. of what I understood at the end, that um, 
the, the guy ain't going away. They also mention at the end of the episode, like, oh, three He Who Remains variants have popped up on other timelines. I really hope mm-hmm. that that's what they tee up down the road still. I don't want them to scrap the King plot because, like you said earlier, Jonathan Majors absolutely cooked in this season as both timely yeah. and, in my opinion, not stole the show because it was Tom Hiddleston there, but destroyed the scenes with uh, as he who remains at the end. Like, he was hilarious, yeah. scary at times, and just his line delivery was amazing. Like, there's a couple mm-hmm. of lines that are just good bars, and then when he imitates, like, what did Victor Timely have to say? Like, oh, he said it was a scaling problem. That's what he told you, huh? Wow, scaling problem. Okay. I don't know. He was just so good. Like, just so cool in the role. I really hope we see some King. And then Judge Renslayer, there is a path for her to go down that villain road, but she's pretty much been a villain this whole time. She's not been on our hero's side. So maybe we could see a Renslayer King union again. She knows now that he kind of cast her to the side by executing Order 66, I mean Protocol 42 mm. at the end of episode, uh, in episode 5 or whatever we saw. So, anyways, I think Renslayer comes back as a villain with Kang. That's kind of what okay. I saw, Dan. What did you think with the purple or whatever we uh, saw? But yeah, so we saw the purple, but there was also a big growl. Mm, okay. we, heard, we heard something, and I don't think it was mm. Kang or okay. something, but it was some sort of monster or I don't know what it could have been. But we did hear a growl. Okay. And I was questioning it. I never searched up on it or anything. But Same. definitely probably sent her off to be killed. Or maybe she <laughs> survives and we see her in a different universe or different, uh, like, maybe movie. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But I don't know where they're going with this, honestly. To, they obviously did it to show that she's probably going to be there eventually or that like that monster where they sent her there was a huge growl they don't just do that for us not to think of something so it could come back in the end it's true but uh renslayer and kang together could be something in the end as eric said it could it could be something because as we watched ant-man and we saw just a bunch of ants take down kang (laughs) it it wasn't we know he's more powerful than that and if he has renslayer by his side maybe it could help I mean, she played a big role apparently in winning the war, as according to Miss Minutes yeah. said, you won the war, like, right. you commanded the army. And another thing, just before I move on from that scene, one thing that stood out to me in that wasteland that uh, Renslayer was in was the first thing that she sees, I think, was a pyramid, which I think could be an homage yeah. to Moon Knight. Oh. In, they're kind of teeing up also That's a true. Kang variant in that show as well. Like they said, mm. I think it's Rama Tut is his name yeah. as like a Kang variant. So if we see a Moon Knight season two make it happen at Marvel, we will then have another Kang in that universe where like within the pyramids and maybe that's where Rensselaer comes back in like she's with Rama Tut or something. I don't know. That's kind of what I thought right when I saw the pyramid. That's what I thought of. Like, okay, Kang Egyptian variant. Yeah, we'll see. And the growl could be like Eliath as well, like the monster that's in that realm where people get pruned. Okay, yeah. Like that could make sense that. as well. So a couple options there, but. Definitely not the last we've seen of Rensselaer. Like, they made a point to show us that she's yeah, alive. Yeah. That's so right. she's coming back, for better or worse. <laughs> but. Th- th- those are good predictions. Really good, actually. She hopefully see her as, like, uh, part of his of Kang's Black Order, you know, like his mm. lieutenants. Nice. Uh, that'd be cool. Oh. Um, they don't... Um, oh, you said a guy said a lot of good stuff. Okay, yeah, Moon Knight. So, like, it'd be cool if they start introducing variants in other shows to prep us for, like, a movie, a cinematic showdown. Mm-hmm. Avengers, Kang Dynasty, have all, like, our heroes from the shows and the other movies face off. But, like, uh, like you said, Dylan, like, Robert Downey Jr. and all that, like, they're trying to recapture the, the glory days, like, trying to bring back all the old actors because they know they're in desperate times right now. Like, yeah. Just quickly, like, uh, MCU, ha- it's gone downhill since Endgame. We've talked about it to death, but, like, Loki Season 2, stuff like that really helps bring it back. If a Moon Knight Season 2 can, like, that could be even better. Like, I could see Season 2 topping Season 1. Like, there's potential still is what I'm saying, and it could still be really great. Like, Ant-Man 3 could have been a great movie, yeah. but it was just garbage. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, this Loki, Loki season two offers hope, in my opinion. It was a really good show. Like I said, I highly recommend it. It offers hope for the MCU, which the MCU desperately needs right now. Mm-hmm. Okay, Loki season two. We're talking about like post-endgame greatness that we've seen. 
Uh, this isn't a take that I'm going to take a page from your book, Matt, with the low tree situation. I am not making this up. People have said this online. I completely agree. Loki is not only one of the best things post-Endgame, best things in MCU, in my opinion. Like, I think mm. this whole show, and I think, honestly, this was better served as a show than a movie. I did not find there was any feel. Like I, like I said earlier, I was hooked from the start. I feel like everything led up to the end of it perfectly. 12 episodes, almost all an hour long. One of the best things the MCU has given us. And one of the biggest character developments we've ever seen in this series. Comparable again to Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man. So I think um, if they can somehow make stuff like this in the MCU, we're in good hands. But then we see shit like... Well, I mean, the Marvels wasn't that bad. We'll talk about it after. But like like you said earlier, Matt, Miss Marvel and She-Hulk... Just gar- secret invasion, my God. We don't even have to look that far back in the past for horrendous content that was given to us. So this was a well-thought-out show with a clear beginning and ending that goes in a circle, in a sense, like snake eating its own tail, but worked perfectly with some complex concepts too, like the the temporal loom and mm-hmm. the throughput multiplier, like time travel i think they did time travel super well in this too honestly i'll just say that it was complicated but it all made sense in my mind and um yeah i mean those are my i guess to close on loki for me anyways absolutely loved it and i hope they keep going forward with the kang storyline that this show is set up keep i want them to keep jonathan majors too i'll just say that i hope they keep him around for the character because he does so well in in this show specifically he's done amazingly better than an ant-man I mean, he was still pretty solid man yeah. too so mm-hmm. to add like to the kang dynasty stuff you were talking about like uh we see at the end that eric mentioned the pyramid i hope that we get to see these other kang variants and maybe see them face off all in the movie against mm-hmm. all the superheroes mm-hmm. we love it would be nice to see that but like um when loki in the end is sitting on his throne and is still holding on to all these branches do you think that maybe he sees a future because he he can go back in time can go forward in time can he still do that can he see a future from there and Mm. like will we see something different like will we be able to loop back to him to know a future eventually because he is still thor's brother there Mm. has to still be a connection in there We, we we have to see them reconnect somehow and I hope that, like, this show is the best show we've seen. Oh, we can all agree it's the best show. Yep. And I hope that yeah. integrate it into the movies as well. Yeah. It would be huge to see that, because we haven't seen that yet. Yeah. We haven't seen anything be integrated into the movie, except for the Scarlet Witch. And, well, I mean, Miss Marvel kind yeah, of. Okay, the Marvels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those True. are the only yeah. two, I think, so far. I fell asleep. Yeah. <laughs> I completely forgot. <laughs> wow. That is a fact. I can confirm. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. That's hilarious. Have to touch on that at home when you guys talk about the movie, but yeah, no, super, so, yeah, super solid show. It okay, it would be cool if Loki came back for sure. Like, I hope it's not a swan song, but it'd be the this the show created like the perfect exit for the character if they show choose to do that. Which if they're smart, they'll bring him back because he's a crowd favorite, of course. Mm-hmm. But no, um, I'm excited. This show like brings back excitement for me. I didn't even finish Secret Invasion, didn't even finish Miss Marvel, didn't even finish She-Hulk. Like, Loki, I had no problem watching, solid, um, because we love the, like, it starts with the actor. You like the main actor that much, he's that good, you're going to watch it. But also, the production, like, the directors were good, the writing was good. Like you said, they had to explain, like, time travel and temporal stuff and loom and all that. Like, it was not boring at all. Mm-hmm. Fun fact, the directors of the episodes are two like they mostly do horror movies they're two uh they're like a partner uh, a duo okay. uh aaron moorhead and justin benson and they mostly do horror movies that deal with like time travel and going back and mm-hmm. redoing stuff actually so this is their like this is their strength right now and really complex psychological film so it's cool that they were picked out to direct these episodes because they're good at explaining that type of stuff um so that was cool um, do we want to move on to, like, we already talked about, I guess, our predictions for post-Loki season two, like, what's mm-hmm. going to happen? Do you think there's ever a possibility of Loki season three, just like a Loki thing, or that should be in the movies now? What do you think? Okay, so, great question. I would love to see a third season of Loki, but then what do you do in it? Like, you, you're, I don't think we're going to go back to the TVA. I feel like that story's been wrapped up. 
and future like this show in my opinion should just tee up a bunch of stuff that happens right. in the movies and then again Moon Knight season 2 hopefully I want it to set off more Kangs basically that's what I would like mm. to see it hop to see happen out of this show and we'll, we can talk about the movies that we know are coming out as well after like is this going to have an effect on Captain America Brave New World I doubt it honestly mm. I feel like that's going to be its own story but from what I understand Deadpool see, Deadpool 3 might be a um, continuation of this branch timeline um, mm. outcome that happens. So, like the like, it's not a spoiler. Like Wolverine is in Deadpool. Like that's a known yeah. fact. And apparently, that's a Wolverine that we've seen from another timeline into the city. Uh, I don't even know what timeline we're dealing with here. But I think Deadpool three is going to be a direct continuation of Loki. And just quickly on Dill's point, great point about Loki being able to see the future. Like, he probably knows like they're fucked in a couple of years. Like, there's going to be all the Council of Kings and, like, this is coming, but he can't intervene. Or maybe he will in some way, like the Watcher did in yeah. What If. So, that, I'm interested to see if that'll happen. That's a great point. And, yeah, future, like I said, I just want to see some Kings pop up in different shows and the aftermath of all the different timelines that, sure, Loki's now controlling them all and making sure... I guess, does this mean now that there are no incursions? Like, they said that timelines could be now um, collapsing into another, and, like, you know in Doctor Strange, don't they talk about that? Yeah, like, two yeah. timelines, like, bump into another. You know, yeah. Like, that's a little confusing. Yeah. So I don't know if now yeah. that's been prevented by Loki overseeing everything. I'm still a little confused, honestly, but uh, I just want to see a lot of multiverse stuff now and eventually the war that'll happen at some point. Yeah, like... As Eric said, I do want to see a lot of multiverse stuff as well. I really like Doctor Strange and Madness uh, of yeah. the multiverse. I really enjoyed it. I know some people didn't enjoy it as much, but obviously would have loved to have seen a little bit more in it. But to see what's to come for the MCU and the like, the aspect of more more universes, more branches, everything, different variants of people, like we can see a lot of different things, and we know that. Moon Knight now is uh, like officially a part of the Spider-Man universe. Oh, MCU yeah. posted that, so Mo we could see Moon Knight soon. Okay. In the MCU, <clears throat> not just another uh, season, but to bring him back and to touch on Deadpool and X-Men, I think it will have an effect with the TVA. Okay. A big effect. I've read a little bit, and the TVA will be uh, an aspect in that uh, movie. Okay. But I don't know if Loki will be. I don't think so. But I know that the TVA is talked about in there. Okay, so nice. It should be a good watch. I'd love to see everything you guys just said. Plus, my like my hopes is we see X Men variants, yeah. Fantastic yeah. Four, like them integrated, a Doctor Doom down the road because Doctor Doom's one of the always hailed as one of the greatest villains ever in Marvel, but we haven't really seen a cool version of him yet. Um, I, I love X Men. It'd be cool to see them pop up like in. Avenger movies and Marvel movies because they're all it's all part of the MCU, right? So um, I don't know like I, I, I also read stuff like the Blade movies canceled or delayed by a lot because they lost Marshallah Ali yeah. and like some movies aren't doing the greatest right now like the projects So I don't know. Are we gonna just see more delays and all that stuff? I'm not sure so Marvel's well, definitely aware. Yeah, go ahead Eric. The last thing I saw actually this was a report yesterday was that basically all the Marvel movies got pushed back a year. The only one okay. that's dropping next year apparently is Deadpool 3, which I honestly don't hate that this yeah. also the Strider strike was a factor here, but it gives them more time to rejig their their plot a little bit here. Maybe because of the success that yeah. Loki season two had, I don't know why they wouldn't want to follow along with, well, okay, I do know why they wouldn't want to follow along with the King storyline, <laughs> but I feel like they got to keep going down this path because this series got so much universal love that it is a cool story that people are interested in seeing where is this going to go now? That's why we're talking about it right now. Like we're having this conversation about, Loki and the impact they'll have on the MCU, they got to keep going with this. Otherwise, like, what was the point of it all, right? So, mm -hmm. Deadpool 3 is going to follow up on that. And you're right, Matt, like, the X-Men, Fantastic Four, I think those are all going to fit in with the um, the multiverse. Like, the Secret War storyline, the, the different timelines coming into one another, like, that's going to happen. And said something else I wanted to touch on. 
Well, anyways, all, Marshall Ali is still going to be in Blade, by the way. They're just, they delayed it, and uh, they're rewriting it okay. in there. So that's still happening. But um, I forget the other thing. It might come back to me there. But, um, yeah, that's it. Like, for all these movies to be delayed, like Eric is saying, it would be, it's good for them that these movies are being delayed to maybe get a little bit more, like, uh, get more views and better, just a better movie in, in all. Like, uh, from what I've seen from uh, the, Miss, the Marvel's movie, the, like, to me, the visuals are still a little off compared to what they were before. And if we can take a little bit more time to revamp everything and make everything look better... It could bring back a lot of MCU love. I find I've lost a little bit. Still a huge lover, but mm. watching She-Hulk, watching Secret Invasion, yeah. Hawkeye was pretty decent, but still, yeah. like it's stuff like that that we'd love to see a little bit more uh, effort put into it, and uh, hopefully we can move along from this. Like the Kang Dynasty, I hope it stays what it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. They they talked about maybe bring Doctor Doom. In instead of, of being the Kangs, but I want to see the Kangs. We still have variants, mm-hmm. and they are super powerful. We already know from the, the comics and from, from the TV shows. Well, he kind of made a fool of himself in Ant Man, but <laughs> we know that they are strong, strong uh, leaders and villains. So hopefully, we can stick to that and keep Doctor Doom for a few more years after that with like a new Fantastic Four movie. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's what I was going to say earlier. That. I talked about this uh, our last Marvel pod, Matt. I don't know if you remember. I said that maybe they do pivot to Doctor mm-hmm. Doom and get rid of Kang. And then Marvel reported yeah. that, like, not too long ago, that, that they were thinking of that. I'm like, did I instill this idea in Marvel headquarters? <laughs> maybe. I don't know. We'll never know. But I don't want them to do that, honestly. Like, especially after Loki's success. Like, just stay the course. Maybe make some minor changes, but don't pivot. Like, Doctor Doom out of nowhere. Yeah. Like, it'd be sick. Like, it's a sick villain. But... We don't need that right now. I think we keep going with Kang and then introduce Doctor Doom down the road as our next big villain. They can still introduce Doctor Doom in Secret Wars. Like from what I understand, yeah. he is still a big part of that storyline. So maybe it ends with like Kang's die in that Avengers movie and Doctor Doom ends up on top in that going forward, even after Secret Wars, the movie, he's still around and they don't get rid of him. They like, keep him around for a few different movies. Like he's then in the Fantastic Four movie or something like there's a lot that they can do with just these two guys keep them around have Ren Slayer die in one of the movies or something yeah. I don't know so there's options and um, yeah on the visuals that Dill said it's insane how like Loki looks better than the Marvels which is a big mm. budget studio movie like Miss Marvel yeah. I love the actress who plays honestly I think she's great but they do her superpowers so dirty and that it looks like I could have designed this on Adobe Premiere. Uh, I'm not even a good video editor. Like, it's nuts how uh, her special effects do not look good, in my opinion. That's my take on it. Uh, and, like, the, the fists, like, it just looks a little goofy. Um, I don't know. Whereas, like, you look at the tree in Loki Season 2, it looks beautiful. It's unreal. Yeah. yeah. Bef- bef- I, want you, I want you guys to get into the Marvels, but just before that... Yes, Marvel was at the t- Marvel could do no wrong before Endgame. They were like at the height of their success. Then I don't know what happened. They went on to autopilot and pumped everything out. Let's try to like make more movies and make more money. But then they lost half of us. They like half the audience. I'm sure doesn't go anymore. So Loki season two, good way to like build our trust and confidence back. Yeah. But now Marvels just came out pretty much at the same time as the finale. So. You guys talk about that now because I don't think this is a return to form for Marvel, isn't it? Okay, so funny you should say that because we went actually on opening night, which as we know, opening night, that's when the, the diehard fans go. Everyone's rolling up. You might see people in a Spider-Man onesie in the theater. People are just getting dressed up, getting a little freaky out there. But um, it was a straight-up ghost town when we were in that theater on that Thursday Oof. night, 7 p.m. slot. Like That's not too late. You bring the kids out. It's a nice date night, whatever you want. But we went, and um, it was, like, I'd say at maximum half full. Borderline, oh. more half, glass half empty situation. Like, it was pretty, the vibes weren't immaculate out there in the theater. There were some people laughing hysterically in the theater, oh which was God. kind of funny, honestly. It gave us some good entertainment to laugh at them laughing. Honestly, I'll just say my thoughts on the Marvel. I didn't hate it. I thought it was a fine movie. I went in with low expectations based on it was getting shredded by the critics. I think kind of unjustified. 
nothing. It's like not. It doesn't like I said reinvent the wheel. And nothing groundbreaking, but had things that I liked. I'll just touch on it quickly. I was a big fan of the chemistry between the three Marvels. So, uh, Captain Marvel, Monica Rambeau, and Miss Marvel. I thought the three of them together were great. They had the classic like banter of it's um, just quips back and forth, like making fun of each other, all that. Like on, like you said, Matt, autopilot. Nothing crazy, but I enjoyed it. And um, had a few good action scenes at the end. I'll say the end was pretty solid. But the movie itself was all right. Good pace, short movie, an hour and 40 minutes. I had no no real problems with it. What you, Dill? Yeah, one hour and 40 minutes, and I fell asleep through half of it. So I uh, <laughs> had a rough night the night before, a long work day. But uh, from what I watched, I honestly enjoyed most of it. I, I, li- I like the characters. I always I've always liked Captain Marvel. And Monica Rambeau, she played a pretty big role in uh, the WandaVision. Yeah. So I really liked her from the start. And I did not watch um, Ms. Marvel. I did not watch the show, but I do like her character. Like Eric said, she, she fits in pretty well into the MCU, which is nice. But I did not get to see the big fight scene at the end. I woke up right oh. at the end. So uh, I might have to rewatch it or wait till it comes on Disney+. Plus. Mm-hmm. So I can't really touch up on that too much. <laughs> I have I have some questions actually. Uh, I know nothing about this movie. Like, what were the stakes like in the movie? Was it like world ending or more smaller scale? And what was the villain like? Like, is there a human villain? Is it another like super powerful villain? And does this take place in the timeline? Is it like a prequel movie? Like, when does the movie take place relative to all the Marvel stuff? It's a lot of questions, Matt. Uh, I'll see what I can answer to the best of my ability. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. So basically, uh, stakes pretty high. Like not like a eternal. Well, actually, in a sense, um, it did have big stakes on the um, the worlds involved in this uh, storyline. Like we, there's a lot of space travel, which I enjoy. So we got to see okay. different worlds, and uh, there was some diversity in um, where we were, which I always enjoy. It's cool when they go to different places. Villain, villain was all right to be honest. I wasn't a huge fan of her. I'm not even sure if this is said in the movie or if it's just um, something I assumed. But I think the villain was like Ronan's daughter. I don't know if that's so, clear or not. Oh. The thing is, I don't know if she's Roman's daughter because she does have his his hammer. Yeah, that we are we already knew from oh. the start. But she, they show a flashback during the movie that she was fighting against Captain Marvel during the Captain Marvel movie. Yeah. So it just it makes no sense for them to be like I don't know the connection between that, but she ends up with the she ends up with the hammer and she ends up with a gauntlet as well. Mm, yeah. So mm. And then the other question, timeline, it's all sacred timeline activity. There's no uh, okay. no mention of different timelines really, I would say. And um it's all just happening in the universe that we know and love. Okay. Yeah. Like but the, I would say, like, especially at the end, anyways, post credit scene too, great stuff. They uh, they tee up stuff to come that I think most people watching would be excited about what's to come in the MCU. Like, it definitely, the post credit scene was unreal. I'll say that. Yeah, didn't get to see that either, nice. but <laughs> the blimp was mentioned as well. Right. So it is okay. it is basically after Endgame. Yes. As yeah. we would see okay. from other movies we'd seen as well. So it it follows through with that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm what I'm gathering is better than Ant Man three, but nothing like not a Thor three or a Civil War, not even close to that height of epicness, no. right, guys? Yeah, well, okay. we, Ant Man three has been mentioned way too many times <laughs> yeah. for my liking in this episode. <laughs> Just like, going through the back catalog of bad memories right now, but no, definitely, I would say honestly, like, middle of the pack. Maybe a, a little below middle too. Like I'd say average movie. I gave it three stars out of five. I feel like I couldn't. If I gave it less than that, two and a half out of five. It's like, I feel like that works too. But I gave Ant Man two and two point five out of five. So I can't give it the same as that. So yeah, gotcha. I mean, I'm not gonna go see it in theaters again. I'll probably rewatch it at some point on Disney Plus though. I would say like you don't need to rush to the theater for it either. You're not really missing out on anything that you need to know for Marvel. Because also, if we get into the future of Marvel now, like the next thing that's coming out is the show Echo, which was a character in Hawkeye, right? Um, I forget right. her name. It's the the oh, deaf yeah. woman in um, Hawkeye who was kind of um, brought under the wing of Wilson Fisk. And this show, let me tell you, when they announced it, I was not excited for it whatsoever. I'm like, why are they 
dedicating a full show for this character. And it looks like it's going to be rated R, TV 14A. Ooh. So, Punisher on, type. On, um, excuse me, on the, yeah, like on the Daredevil and Punisher type wave. Like the tone of that show okay. looks like the same as those shows. So, love that they're going with that kind of vibe with it. And I'm actually very excited. The whole season drops early January next year. So five episodes all in the same day. Cool. So I'm excited for that, actually. But that doesn't look like it'll have any implication on different timelines and stuff. It's a boots to the ground. Like, um, who are the superheroes like that? Like Daredevil, Spider-Man, maybe Moon Knight, I guess. Like those kind of characters. Hopefully Punisher, too. Punisher I would be sick. I love the Punisher. Yeah, I love the, that TV show. But um, yeah. for another show that they were announcing... I forget the name of it, but I don't. I think they canceled it. Um, Ironheart. It? Yeah. Yeah. Iron Iron, I think it was Ironheart. Yeah. With okay. Yeah, but I don't think she's gonna come back. Do you, I'm not sure. You, yeah. What are your guys' take on that? On that character, I didn't yeah. think that misfire to me. That was like in Black Panther two, right? They showed her. Yeah, exactly. And like from all those yeah. movies back then, like Black Panther two wasn't it was it was an all right movie for all right and yeah like we've seen I, one movie i did like that they released after endgame was shang chi mm. i hope that we get to see his character yeah. again and oh, yeah. that's a movie that, that doesn't is, get talked yeah. enough about like so. eric said it was underrated new movie right shang chi like you were a big uh it, it is a good movie Love Shang Chi. Um, like, that's a movie I'd really yeah, watch in a heartbeat. It. I have at least I've seen it at least three times at this point. Some of my favorite like martial arts um, fighting, like hand to hand combat. Mm -hmm. The choreography was amazing. It was reminiscent of the show that I've plugged early on the pod, Warrior. Check it out if you haven't seen it. And um, yeah, no Shang Chi. I hope we get that sequel at some point down the near future. But nothing's announced in terms of like release date for that. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we get to see that down the road. Ironheart. I don't know. Like, I feel like the first time I saw it, I was like, eh, she's all right. And then the second time, I disliked her even more. I found that she was a bit too in the mix of, like, being very comfortable to be cracking jokes and stuff, which maybe if you're in that situation, nervous ticks come out and you, I don't know. She was all right. If that's a show they kind of scrap, I'm fine with. Yeah. And I want them now that if they do commit to a project that they have a clear vision and that it fits into the big picture or it's going somewhere, not just shows for the sake of having shows like She-Hulk and uh, Secret Invasion. Ugh. Just to go back on the Marvels, Secret Invasion has zero impact on what happens mm. in the Marvels, which I thought was going to be the case that Secret Invasion, you're following Nick Fury, we got the Skrulls, which are both in the Marvels. No mention of what happened in that mm. show. So pretty nuts. Swing and a miss that show was. So yeah. everything oh, that they yeah. put forward now, if that means taking a break and recalibrating, do it. Make sure it fits into the big picture or a picture. Yeah. No, like Solid. Secret Invasion. Like I love Samuel L. Jackson. I love Nick Fury, but they really dropped the ball with that one. They had a lot of potential for that that show, mm -hmm. in my opinion, with all like the superhero involvement in the last episode, like the the superpowers. Yeah. Could have been an epic fight scene, but ended up being just a mediocre fight scene. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Opinion. It was a fight scene. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. So hopefully we can see yeah. much better from the MCU after Loki with TV shows and movies because they, they can learn a lot from these directors from this this show, yeah. in my opinion. 100%. Yeah. I think Echo Loki, is a good Loki. promising... Like, uh, Echo is promising. I don't know why like, I'm, I have okay. high hopes yeah. for it now. I'll take but, your word for it. Yeah. Yep. No, I, I was just going to say, like, because Loki's original, it's not formulaic it's not predictable it's something we've never seen before that's why we liked it on top of the great acting yes. but i feel like a lot of the new movies of marvel have been cookie cutter super simple story yeah. so super simple good versus evil predictable good guys win in the end like and, uh i'm not not allowed to say the movie title but uh <laughs> no, no, <go> quantum <laughs> media <laughs> uh, like that movie was like for children yes so we need darker stuff like loki you know like mm -hmm. Throw us for a loop. Give us another Infinity War where you piss us off, piss us all off at the end with a downbeat ending. Like, do that. Do something yeah. crazy like that. That'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah. Did, did you pose it? Was there any questions on Instagram for this pod, yes. Eric? Or good, I can't remember. Good reminder. I always, I often forget to bring these up. So good call. Um, archive. 
Okay, so I think there is a couple. A poll, right? No, no, chocolate versus candy, the Halloween one. <laughs> candy just got destroyed in that poll. <laughs> um, so there were, I think, two. So, hold up, hold up, sorry. Yeah, okay, so thoughts on Loki 2 season far. Lo- thoughts on Loki season 2 so far. That was the first one. That was after three episodes, and um, or after four. And it was, what are your thoughts on it? Is it the best Marvel show? Is it mid? Is it the best product post Endgame? Or is it good, not great? So most people voted that it was the best Marvel show. One person said it was mid. I think that was just a hater who hasn't even seen it. Well, I know it, that's the case. Not going to say who. Yeah. And then two people said it was the most post Endgame product. So even better than the movies that we've seen in there. And then one person said good, not great. So that was with two episodes left. So maybe by the end... The, the, per, the person who said good, not great might have come around because I think it is great. Like it, it's, I'd yeah. be hard pressed to find people who watched this whole season and didn't think it was great. So a lot of people said best show. I think most people would agree best show. Yeah, I can agree for that, honestly. like It can get confusing at some points trying to follow a lot of stuff, especially if you like look at your phone for a second or something during your watching the show, but it's, it's a little bit oh, yeah. hard to follow, but once you really get into it, it's easy to... Uh, love it honestly like for you matt where does it land would you say in the best show range the best post end game product or even like i said earlier bet one of the best mcu products like where would you slot it in those three options bet best marvel show i don't think it's the best product since end game but it's the best marvel show by far okay yeah yeah it's tough okay. um okay, go ahead. what i was gonna say uh, dylan said something good and i free. So I have too many ideas, but oh yeah, yeah, for sure. This is a show where you have to pay attention, subtitles on, phone super far away, so I'd have yeah, to get up yeah. to go get it because I couldn't miss. Like I'd see all the dialogue. It's it's you you can't half ass watching this show. You have to like be all in, and I was. I was even taking notes during the episode for the podcast, so that actually helped me. Like that helped me pay attention more. So, which is what I like, like make it an intellectual, like the first thing I said on this episode, like intellectual, make it an intellectual show. We can handle it. It wasn't too over the, like we understood everything. Uh, You don't have to like spoon feed us like childish ideas and crap, like in movies I won't name anymore, but like, (laughs) we like this stuff. We're we're ready for the, like a more, we put our big boy pants on and we watch the show and we enjoy it. Like we're ready for that in the movies now. No more origin stories. No, well, we can get origin stories still, but like, give us something complicated. We're we're all we're down for it. Mm-hmm. Agreed. I feel like we've been going for a long. I, honestly, we could keep going on this Loki show and uh, what it's setting up and all of that. But on your point, Matt, for best um, no, sorry, for no origin story. I agree. I want to see. Like, just throw in, throw us the Fantastic Four in there. Give us the X-Men. Like, don't... Yeah. Let's not go back and see how they all got their powers. We all know by now. Like, yeah, just even throw them in. Even if you're born yeah. in the year 2007, you know how these people got their powers. There's been enough movies out already on the origin story. And like they did in um, Spider-Man Homecoming, or even Civil War, we just... Spider-Man's thrown yeah. in the mix, like, yeah, I got bit by this bug, blah, blah, blah. Like, I got my powers. Yeah. Like, that's it. Like, that's what I want to see with those other heroes. And, um... Yeah. Those are really the only heroes I want to see introduced at this point. I don't think there's anyone else that I'm aware of anyways. But um, I agree. Yeah. The other poll was basically like, what's the hype level at for the Marvel? So I put like a little scale. And uh, it definitely hindered more on the uh, less than excited part of the the scale. But anyways, I would say like go into the Marvels with an open mind. It doesn't, like you said, Matt, it, it is kind of cookie cutter but it's still a decent ride, and um, I think merits to be seen, but not okay. a rush to the theaters opening night like no one else did, really. So, yeah, um, Marvel. Do you want to recommend any recommend any other stuff? Or? Yeah. I've got a few things on the go right now. First of all, I'll say there's a book that I don't I have upstairs. I'm not gonna Ooh. go run and get it there, but I'm reading Will Smith's autobiography right now called Will. Very good stuff. Ah. If you want an insight on the mind of this guy, and he's he's had an insane life, yeah. which like we all re- remember him for his iconic slap bet incident yeah. at the the Oscars a few years ago. But there's a lot you can see in reading the book. I'm like halfway through right now. You can see where everything that's happened in his life kind of led up to 
where he's at in his marriage with Jada right now or his uh, situation ship yeah. with her and uh, just an yeah. insane life and very inspiring at times like his upbringing is pretty crazy and it's a funny book like he's a funny dude and um, he kind of pulls back the curtain on like this facade we see of Will Smith as like this funny guy like easygoing friendly nice with everybody like there's a lot of pain back there and he's just playing a character as a lot of us are in life so uh, it's it's definitely interesting so i would recommend will by will smith i just grabbed it at the library if um you don't want to spend the 40 bones on that book i would recommend doing that so will <clears throat> by will smith awesome do you have anything uh dylan like anything show movie Honestly, tv show, um, music music Honestly, I know that like I've I've watched WandaVision, I loved it, and I know that they had set up another show for it, Agatha. Oh yeah. To move I do you guys know if they're gonna keep going with that? Agatha Coven of Chaos. Yeah. That could be good. I, yeah. I, like, I like the actress. She's she's a pretty funny actress. Yep. Yeah, yeah, she is. She is. Uh, I don't know if they're gonna end up going forward with that to be honest. Like I said, they're re looking at stuff right now and uh, we'll see if that one falls by the wayside, but uh that could be interesting for sure, and I, I don't really know what they would do with her necessarily. Like, if she's, like, trapped right now under a, some sort of spell. But Wanda's dead now, so yeah, exactly. she got out of the spell. So who knows? We'll see. And that, that's definitely another one to look out for, see if they keep it going yeah. down the road. But yeah, Because Wanda being dead is huge. Like, one of my favorite female characters in the MCU. Yeah, right. It breaks my heart. Hopefully they bring her back yeah. as well. Hopefully. But yeah. When nothing else that, I really yeah. know. Okay, no, it's... Uh, Coven of Chaos, be on the lookout for that. Matt, anything? I, uh, yeah, I've been watching TV and movies. Been more into the movies lately because baseball's done. Not, yeah. not, I watch my movie. Um, start off with the TV show. Started the, what we do on, what we do in uh, Disney. Uh, <laughs> why did your head pop up here? Um, did I already talk about this? No. No, sorry. So it's just on our end, you were like glitching out for a bit. Like there's a lot of. Oh, if you're watching okay. the YouTube, you were privy to all those sounds that were coming uh, from Matt's. Oh end. No, 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 no. I think you're good now. So what we do in the okay, channel? Okay, okay. Because I started talking, I started talking, and you guys like looked reacting like, oh, did I say something? <laughs> okay. What we did in the shadows basically filmed exactly like the Office documentary crew that's following four vampires that are roommates that are in a house and it's just day-to-day -day activities. It's all comedy, it's very stupid. Okay. It's yeah. rated 14A or rated R. It's a really funny show, I highly recommend it. It's really highly rated too online. I know our cousin Dylan, our other cousin, your other cousin Dylan, Eric, recommended it to me years ago and I'm finally watching it. It's really good, 20 minute episodes. That's a TV show I've been watching. I've also been cranking out the movies and I'll just talk about on Netflix, Old Dads with Bill Burr. Watch that. Um, yeah. yeah, I liked it a lot. Um, it was funny. Burr, Bobby Cannavale, they're hilarious in it. Um, Bill, I like his type of comedy. Like, you know, he's he's an old dad in the movie. He's complaining about, like, the, the younger generation. I, all those jokes hit hard for me. They were great. After rewatching it, the movie after rewatching the movie too, like I noticed a lot of little things. It's not like reinventing the wheel, or it's not like the Hangover type funny, but like it's a it's a good like wholehearted funny movie. Uh, um, you guys said you both watched it, or just you, Dylan? Not me, no. I, I did watch it. I enjoyed it. It was really it, good. Yeah, it was very funny. I really like the jokes that they implemented in there, and yeah, the, the actors exactly. really yeah, fit too. well together. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, it was solid. Easy watch too. Yeah. You have nothing to throw on, Eric. Throw it on. Okay, nice. Um, Netflix would you have anything else there? So, I want. I'll check that out for sure because I've been kind of slacking on the movie TV. So, movie TV, really, movies for me, uh, TV shows for me have been like Loki and the Gen V, which I just finished up. I, have to watch I, I enjoyed it honestly. Like, if you like the boy, I know I talked about it last episode. Good show. It really sets up now season four of the boys. So. You kind of do have to be aware of what happens in Gen V to watch season four of The Boys. So I'll throw that back okay, on I'll check it out. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for my like movie and TV show. Okay. Doing one ch movie I'll just blindly recommend that I haven't watched yet, but it's been on my radar. Now it just dropped on Netflix, The Killer. So I think it's a David oh. Fincher movie, and it stars Michael Fassbender. I'm hearing good things about it. And um, Michael Fassbender, amazing actor. Like him as Magneto, too, just to bring it back to Marvel. Great, great 
portrayal. So I'd throw that. I'm going to watch yeah. that at some point soon. So hopefully we can loop back and say that my recommendation was good. And um, yeah, musically, I'll just throw in. I've been kind of out of the rap game in the last few weeks anyways. Like I've really just been listening to old Easy Conversations episodes. And music that I listen to while I work is like, like I've already talked about soundtracks and stuff. The Batman soundtrack and Werewolf by Night soundtracks have just been in rotation for me in the last few days. They're both by um, the same composer, Michael, what's his name? Michael Giacchino. Okay. Amazing music. And if you've seen Werewolf by Night, like, you know the background music is great. Like, very eerie, like, Halloween-esque, right? So, for me, it's been seasonally correct to listen to that. And uh, good background noise. So I'd recommend those two soundtracks. Just throw them on if you want some like ambiance, if you will, while working. Sweet. Yeah. Uh, thanks for bringing back Werewolf by Night because now like a color version's out of it, and I kind of want to watch it again. Me too. Um, oh, okay. I did see the killer. I watched the killer oh, last okay. night on Netflix. It was awesome. Right, Give it nice. four stars. Let's go. No, Very old things. school. Like, it looks like an old school movie takes his time isn't isn't super fast paced necessarily but like i was never bored for a second it, it's a very european it looks like a european movie from the 70s like crime like very methodical movie i'm not i don't want to say too much it, i i really liked it eric okay. um it's a good recommendation <laughs> i'm gonna recommend another movie on amazon that this one on amazon prime for the simple fact that the two actors in the movie are great and that's the movie is called a good person and it stars florence Pugh and morgan freeman oh, yeah. they were amazing in this drama it's a hard-hitting drama tragic intense movie i loved it because of the performances of morgan freeman and uh, florence Pugh. they're both great actors morgan freeman is like in his 80s he can still do still amazing in my opinion so i recommend that movie a good person read up on it if you want to watch it it's kind of sad but it's a good drama I know, I love me some Florence Pugh for sure, so I'll definitely check that one out. It was on my radar, honestly, because I had heard good things about it. She was promoting it as well. I think it's Zach Braff who wrote and directed mm. it as well. I think they're yeah. either they were together. I don't think they are anymore there. But um, That's right. Yeah, right on. I'll check that one out. I'm glad to see that it's on uh, Prime Video too, so good stuff, good recommendation. Um, yeah, that's all that's I got, honestly. I got nothing else. Yeah. Been... Uh, a lot of hockey and uh, just stuff. Uh, Loki might just re-rip it as we're doing mm-hmm. right now. It's just playing in the background this whole episode. So it's been nice background noise as well. Um, so, yeah, I think that's a good spot to wrap it up. Marvel still, there is potential. There's hope. Loki has been the bastion of hope and given the MCU yeah. some glorious purpose, if you will, uh, going forward. So, Dill, thanks a lot for joining us, man. Um, killed it on here any final notes for the listeners well thanks for having me guys and uh now we know that the god of mischief is maybe now the god of the multiverse kind hey, of it's true. so mm. let's yeah. look into that yeah, well said yeah so yeah, yeah. Matt, as per usual no just thank you yeah go ahead <laughs> sorry to interrupt no thank you everybody that listen and dylan you thank you for coming on you were amazing you need to come back on the show because you're a great guest and we'll do something more fun next time and less like like food you know like maybe a fun list or something but no you were great Dylan. thanks for coming on and thank you everybody for listening yeah well said matt so thanks a lot everybody for listening stay tuned for episode dropping every two mondays continue to enjoy your uh the fall weather and uh yeah peace